know me as Nelson, some of you do. Um, last year, I attended a prayer vigil, and I was assaulted by the chief of police and two other officers. I came tonight to see what was going to be done and where we was, where was where were we at. What we'll do is we will turn that over to our, if it's okay with the council, we'll turn that over to the city manager and the city attorney, and we'll respond to her. Yeah. Uh, I've we, talked with you already, yeah. and okay. as well as GBI. Yeah. Okay. There, that, that has been uh, uh, already looked into in regards to the situation, uh, and I, I'll have a some information for y'all as far as the outcome in regards to that investigation from what I understand. Okay, but the investigation has concluded. <coughs> Excuse me for a second, ma'am. The, the investigation has concluded? I, I believe I'll have to check into it to make sure okay. uh, as far as that. So we have to make sure that the investigation has concluded before we talk about that. So uh, what would be the time frame for you to get back with her? Um, probably within a I would think within the end of this week or first of, end next of this week. week. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. <coughs> Is there anyone else here that has a concern? Outstanding. At this time, make sure we get her contact information. Make sure we get her contact information. If I COB Fry. Okay. Ma'am. At this time, I entertain comments from the Marion Commission. Commission Gower, get us started. Seems like I always get us started. Um, first, I'd like to thank, you know, we're coming in that time of year for, to celebrate my favorite time of year, Thanksgiving and the Christmas holidays, where we give thanks for all our blessings and, uh, commemorate the birth of our Savior. It's a special time of year. And I want to thank my fellow commissioners and Mayor Paul um, for your help and patience and learning my duties here. And I want to say everyone here, I'd also like to thank all our city employees. Um, anytime I've needed help with anything, I've had any questions or whatever, everyone has been patient with me and taking the time out to answer my questions. And it's helped me a lot in getting adjusted to um, serving in this position. Um, it was mentioned the 63rd group had their reunion this weekend. I had the opportunity to go out there Saturday. Um, my children had the opportunity to go out there with me as well. Uh, they really enjoyed being able to uh, check out the airplanes is what caught their attention. Um, I learned some things I didn't. I'd been out there to the uh, museum back when it was uh, very, when it got started. But I appreciate all those who participated and got that, that luncheon together. You know, to commemorate these men, um, I did not realize the scope of our involvement uh, as a city back when that base was uh, in operation during World War II. They said we trained about 10,000 10, pilots that served in the Army Air Corps, which of course later became the U.S. Air Force. And there was about five veterans there. I think they said the youngest was 91. Um, so, it, you know, it's been that long. Uh, but I appreciate all those who have uh, put their time and effort to make sure that we have that base. It was also pointed out to me that that is one of the few, maybe the only base in the United States that functioned as a training center during World War II that is now uh, still in existence. So it's, it's, it's a historical landmark. You know, it's kind of, it's a city treasure. Um, and I was able to talk with some of the, some of the uh, folks that were there and family members, and they really appreciated the fact that we keep that base up and that, that you know, I talked to uh, the daughters of some of the men who trained there, you know, and they talked about the influence that time living here in Douglas and training there and the men they worked with. It, it had a big influence on their life. And when you think of the big picture, you know, what these men accomplished, uh, you can go over to Savannah. There's an 8th Air Force Museum where a lot of these men uh, ended up serving and flying in the 8th Air Force, which was stationed out of England during World War II. And uh, there were memorials there. Um, you know, I think they took out, that Air Force had about a 25% casualty rate. Uh, 
you know, we think about being in the air, you know, you're not down on the ground in the mud, but unfortunately when your plane gets hit, there's no soft landing for many of those men. And a lot of men, you know, they made the ultimate sacrifice. And um, very thankful to all those men who did that and for our city for maintaining and that uh, historical landmark to honor those men. Um, I do want to address the situation. I noticed in the newspaper probably a lot of y'all uh, our representative Larickia pointed out that he was disappointed that we as a city commission had approved for the city of Douglas residents to vote on Sunday alcohol sales. Um, I want to thank him for bringing that to our attention, uh, for his involvement and his concern. <coughs> and quite frankly, you know, as far as my personal beliefs go, I'm in agreement with Representative Larickia in that. Uh, I don't think alcohol use is a good thing in our society. Um, I don't, my person, and these are some of my personal feelings. I don't, not trying to say, not speaking as a as a uh, as a commissioner, but uh, myself, I worked in law enforcement here in Coffee County uh, for six years full time and three years part time while I was going to school, and uh, I know firsthand the the negative effects that alcoholism and, and alcohol use can have on our society. Um, as a church member, our, our church chooses not to drink. I teach my children that. I don't drink at home or anywhere else for that matter, and that's what I teach my children. However, in my role as a city commissioner, uh, as is outlined apparently by the legislation passed by the Georgia General Assembly, they have left that decision on whether a community has Sunday alcohol sales to be decided by that community uh, after it's been the vote has been the, the decision to vote has been approved by the governing body, which in our case is the city commission. Uh, Mayor Paul asked me my feelings about it when we were trying to when this came up. I think community members had asked him about it, and my feelings on it is as a member of a democratic society, I think it is my role as a representative here to ensure that the citizens have a voice in what goes on in their community. And while you know, I would sit here and tell you, you know, I disagree with any alcohol sales. I, I'm fine with prohibition to come back in for all that matter because, like I say, I don't think, from my perspective, I've never seen any good come out of alcohol consumption. I don't believe it's something that, that's good for our bodies. Uh, you know, my personal belief. You know, that people talk about well, it talks about wine in the Bible. Well, my understanding of history, and if you research historically, uh, that word wine as used in the New Testament of the Bible, also refers to uh, juice from the grape that has not been fermented. I just don't see my Savior going around getting drunk, nor any of his followers or his apostles. But again, that's my personal belief. But the bottom line is, I'm, while I'm personally opposed, and I will vote no if anybody cares or anybody wanted to ask me, I imagine every member of my church that lives in the city of Douglas that will vote on this will vote no as well. I appreciate all our churches out there who are getting involved and I encourage them to stay involved in this issue. If that's what you believe and, and advocate, you know, I'm with you. But I believe that it's an issue that needs to be decided by the people. And so that's why I voted to allow it to happen. I didn't vote in favor of it, but I voted in favor that because we are a democracy, I believe that because that, that was what was decided by the legislation that our community needs to have the chance to vote on it. And since we've, it's been addressed, you know, that the letter or what the comments that I saw talked about um, not talking to the uh, the other governing bodies in our county, namely the the county commission and the and the the county school board. Um, you know, as commission, I you know I did not think about that issue, but I certainly um, do not dismiss their point of view. I do not think that uh, that they need to be subject to me, you know. But any constituent who has a concern. You know, I'm ready to hear it. And I can say, you know, uh, my contact information is posted on the City of Douglas website. You know, we've got people in, that know how to get a hold of me here at City Hall. And nobody called me or emailed me about this issue until I saw it in the newspaper. I did have a, a gentleman at church ask me about it. And I told him just what I, what I said to y'all, that while I'm personally opposed to it, I believe that the citizens need to have the right to decide. I would point out... Uh, another issue that affects everyone in this room and everyone in our county 
If you'll look at your ballot when it comes up or the proposed ballot, you can look at the Secretary of State's website. We have a proposed constitutional amendment, number one. Shall the Constitution of Georgia be amended to allow the state to intervene in chronically failing public schools in order to improve student performance? Now, that's a simple phrase. I find the way it's been worded as to what, as compared to what the state intends to do, to be misleading. It is misleading. Um, and nobody from the Georgia General Assembly ever asked me what I thought about it. To my knowledge, no one from the Georgia General Assembly contacted our county school board before they voted and decided to get this on the ballot. That is a monumental change when you're amending the Georgia Constitution. I speak that to you as a professional who works in the field of law who has studied our Constitution and our state Constitution and the laws that we have in our state. What concerns me and what's not being said in this little paragraph is that what is planned is that there is supposed to be an opportunity school district to be created, which we have administered by our state educational officials in the government, meaning Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, like I said before the meeting, at this point in time in my life, I've got six children that are enrolled in Coffee County Schools. And my wife is a school teacher. I don't know if there's anybody in Coffee County. If there are, I'd like to meet them who's got more invested in the Coffee County school system. This is an important issue to me and the future of my children. Um, what concerns me is the criteria for entry into this school district. Uh, that criteria is going to be can be literally a moving target. It can change from day to day, from year to year on who's put in that list, who gets off of that list, once you're on the list. <coughs> our school board and our, our school superintendent who's appointed by that board is not going to have the authority to govern that school. That concerns me. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, from what the research I've done, I believe that's overkill. Uh, over the last nine years that I've interacted with my school officials here in Coffee County, with teachers, with principals, assistant principals, and so forth, when I've had concerns about what goes on in my schools and I've gone down there to talk with those people, they've been responsive to me. They've assisted me. They've been courteous to me. They've addressed my concerns, you know, in a, in a timely fashion. Um, I have no dispute with the leadership that we have here in Coffee County that are, they're trying to do the best they can do to ensure that our children are properly educated and take care of their needs. It very much concerns me that that control could be shifted uh, to the state capitol with no local control or no say so. And that is what that, that Amendment 1 represents there. So, you know, I would advise everybody to do their own research and look at that. But as for me, I'm voting no. I can't speak for my wife, but I think, you know, I think she's got her concerns about that as well. But uh, I think it's overkill. From the research, my wife happens to be pursuing her master's degree in education right now and in helping. Uh, prepare her assignments and proofreading and, and reading articles that that, uh, that she has to read in books and, and scholarly journals, it appears that this, this whole movement of top-down um, management from Washington, D.C. and from our state capitals is not the most efficient or best way to bring about change in public schools. We do need their support, but I think we need local control. We need to have a way, and I believe we have personnel in our State Department of Education that can walk into a school board building and say, how can we help you and serve you? That's what I would like to see, not a blanket takeover that will cost who knows how much money. I don't know if, if everybody realizes this, but maybe the largest chunk of our state budget goes toward education. That is a lot of money that we're talking about here, a lot of money. That very much concerns me. Um, in regard to... The upcoming vote, I would I would encourage everybody. Everybody knows early voting has started. Please get out there and vote. I've heard we've got great turnout. I would encourage you to continue to get out there. Make your voice known. And I will say to you, you know, when, I, when everything is said and done, if you haven't voted, don't come complaining. We don't want to hear it. You know, this is, our, this is our opportunity. Whether you think it counts or not, get your tail out there and vote. I think every vote counts. It ought to count for the fact that you have a voice, unfortunately. There's many countries in this world where nobody has a voice. Go ask North Korea. Go ask Cuba. Go ask Venezuela what their vote means. I think they put a stamp on there and they had like, you know, Hugo Chavez back when he was living. And that's what everybody had to choose from. Um, 
we have a privilege here. A privilege has been paid for by men's blood. Please take advantage of that civic right that's been afforded to, to you. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Thank you very much. You feel better? Thank you, Mike.